I'm Scott. And I'm Russell. And I'm Leo. This is Spitball. Welcome to Spitball, the Pitching Kitchen, where three gadget gurus empty our heads of startup and tech product ideas that we have stuck up in there so you can all have them for free. Anything that we say is yours to keep. And this week, I brought our guest. Uh, this week, we have uh, my friend, my colleague, former intern, but not. He left us for another department. Please welcome my friend, Sander. Hello, hello. Happy Ooh. to be here. Applause. 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 Thunderous This is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> 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 and this week not only do we have a fourth guest but we have a fifth as well um we do i a new friend of the show ruben rabasa who you may know from i think you should leave uh the sketch where the weird steering wheel don't fly off and go out the window uh he has his own idea that we're going to be discussing today for a tech product are you serious uh so let's give that a listen and then we will discuss i'm serious it's about time. that's amazing Many Here celebrities are submitting their ideas. This is their first of many. <laughs> Hello, Scott. Hello, Russell. Hello, Leo. It is me, the man with great cat ideas and your friend, Ruben Robotha. First of all, I love the name and the idea of your podcast. And trust me, I know a good idea when I hear one. I have a couple of ideas for an app. Hmm. I think there should be an app where two or more friends can listen to the music at the same time <laughs> in their headphones, okay? And maybe even be able to talk between themselves. Oh, wow, that sounds good. And I also think there should be an app to make Paul shut up. Oh, my God. <laughs> I hope that none of you steering will fly off the window while you are driving, okay? So bye now, and um, please, please don't ever, ever forget about me. I love you, all of you. Bye now. <laughs> so thank you for your message, Ruben. That was delightful. So we, uh, I did a little bit of research. There isn't really like a, a standalone app that does this, right? So you you have two or more people who are synchronized listening and maybe even discussing at the same time. Apple's FaceTime does have what they call SharePlay now, where you can be on a FaceTime call and like start up Netflix and it syncs up or start up Spotify. I don't know if Spotify has support for that yet, but that could be an option. But other than that, a lot of these are like a desktop app where you're all taking turns, adding something to the queue or like your group message managing a queue of like a device in a room or something. I don't know about like yes. discord, but for this it was a disc, there really was cool a discord one. app that did this until it got shut down by someone. I can't remember what yeah. it's called, but I know I used it where you can be in the discord call and you can add things to the queue. And you all had to have the same, you know, it was a bot, I think. And it would pretend to be a user that would like pop into the voice channel. And they were always a little bit hacky playing from YouTube or whatever. I use those too. Dude, this is like silent disco mode. So like you can just turn it on and everybody in the room can listen to the same stuff. That'd be dope. It is crazy that silent discos. So uh, Hope College where we work still has one every once in a while, which is fun. But they use like giant headphones and radio FM transmitters and stuff. It does seem like something that should be dragged to the modern age where anyone can just kind of do it. Right. It's just, you know? what, yeah. what do you, I don't even know how hard, this doesn't seem like a hard thing to do. It's just like Chromecast, but you send out the link to everybody at the same time. Right. Spotify even has a group, yeah. like a queue management system. They just don't it's have. It's called Spotify jams. Whenever you yeah. connect to a Bluetooth speaker, it's now on by default much to everyone's oh, that's cool. embarrassment. <laughs> so then you oh. can like go on someone else's phone and add something to the queue that is or is not maybe appropriate like this show. <laughs> Spitball.show. <laughs> <laughs> New feature. You go around public places Five gigahertz. and force other people's. <laughs> Five gigahertz. <laughs> force everyone's Thanks, else. Avid fan. <laughs> <laughs> deep, deep reference, deep cut to episode six. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Sander. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised. Like, this could work for YouTube videos. This would work great on, like, a plane, right? When you're trying to watch the same show, yeah. right? It's like Teleparty, but better. That's another extension thing that does sort of this, but it's not great. Teleparty. Yeah, What's it used that? to be called Netflix Party. It. Yeah, oh, yeah, the Chrome, extension. Chrome extension that allows you to watch Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube at the same time, but it doesn't do it for music, I think. So, 
another thing in this genre. It does seem like the airplane idea. Like, why is it that you can't like vote consensus on a plane and then half the plane or more watches the same thing and you can have like a little discussion about it afterward? <laughs> You're all trapped in a tube together. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? That, it's like an introvert's <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> Not like physical discussion. I well, I guess you could do it like voice. I guess I meant more forum. Not yeah. only do I not get to choose what I get to watch, but I have to you guys, talk about it afterwards. <laughs> you guys remember planes used to just be like, you'd have to share a screen for like the first, the next five rows behind you. And you're just stuck with what everybody's watching on the plane. Like that was yeah. it. The in-flight movie today will be. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess we're all watching the old ass Dune or something. Snakes on a plane. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> That's a great choice. <laughs> anyway yeah. very tangential i think there's a like um in my co-working space at four o'clock every friday uh black uh, rebecca black song it's friday comes on condolences i think that that should just be a thing for the planet just at four o'clock across <laughs> the planet <laughs> someone Man call rebecca door. black <laughs> i don't see why yeah it's just it should be the anthem for Friday at four. Everybody just start start wrapping up, you know. Get out of here. Four o'clock <laughs> Eastern, though. Of course, it can't 1984. be. Nineteen eighty four. Screw you, Eastern. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Screw other places. Screw other shifts. Four p.m. Eastern that starts playing. Well, thank you very much, Ruben, for the idea. We will take that under consideration. And if someone wants to have that idea for free, please, Spotify product manager, who wants to get a promotion. Add this feature. It does seem like something that'd be really cool. Like a uh, way for me to stay connected to someone from afar. Let's start up a, a queue and listen to the same music for a couple of hours. And Russell, you're up this week. What's up? What do you got for us? All right. So I've been uh, actually listening to more podcasts than normal. And more. <laughs> this one in particular is the best. Uh, just on repeat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm starting to realize how frustrating. I just want to comment and communicate while I'm listening to podcasts to the podcasters, right? Like it's, I feel like we, as a podcaster myself now, I would love to have dialogue with our, our listeners or whoever is talking and wants to share something about the show, right? We have four segments. I just want somebody to leave a comment anywhere (laughs) on our podcast. And in particularly, if I say something terrible, I would love to see the comment chain correcting my behavior or, or telling me you're going to prison when I talk about tax fraud. Um, right. I, I just am surprised that you see these uh, all over the place with YouTube having timestamps. Uh, you have SoundCloud having comments in the bar themselves as you're listening. Why isn't there a podcast app out there that exclusively does this, right? I feel like it's a game changer for podcasters and for the people listening to podcasts because how cool would it be if like your favorite podcaster comments back on your on your comment like or mentions it on the next podcast or like you create a podcast longevity rather than the single week or day that it's released it's just a continuing conversation um so yeah that's what the better podcast app i don't have a name for it but that's great (laughs) it's the social podcast app. that's great right like the bpa got the little like tick marks next to the the progress bar and it has a hey, this person said this at this time right uh now that google podcast is shutting down and everything's moving to youtube it does seem like the natural place for that to live because there's already built-in comments and there's already a podcast platform there people are publishing to youtube you just kind of have the comments scoot up and live up in the uh up in the progress bar itself i think youtube has a feature like that now where you can like when you sort comments, you can sort by like at this point in the video, but I don't think it's right. like a live feed. Yeah, it doesn't look super great like in real time. You, know, you want to see the sort of like Dark Souls, like Elden Ring, where you've got the like the people are not happening in real time here, but they're leaving notes for each other at places in the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And I'm sure you can make this more social. Like I'd love to see my friends comments mm. or the top comments oh. on a podcast like That's where it would be really cool. And obviously you're not trying to like, hopefully you can make the app like very vocal friendly, right? Because I feel like you're not, you're intentionally not watching your screen. So you just be like, Mm. leave a comment or 
hey podcasty you know let me leave a comment at that that point in time and it'll record your voice text and then there it is it's just done you still listen to your podcast you leave your notes so you you're saying like leo could re leo recommends podcasts <laughs> all the time leo listens to a podcast ahead of time leaves comments and then I'm generally driving when I'm listening to a podcast. Does Leo's voice come on top of it, reading his comment at that particular spot? Or you think it's speech to text? What were you thinking? Oh, I was thinking, I was thinking, yes, yeah, speech to text comment leaving, but you just made it way cooler, Scott. Like, Leo left a comment here. Would Every like three seconds. No, no, don't Something ask. Like... Just Leo just appears in the background. <laughs> Wasn't this part cool? I've watched... <laughs> I've watched movies next to Leo before. I know how it works. I can go back in time and leave a spoiler for the next three minutes, too. Like, that'd be a dope. Right. You know? <laughs> and you could, like, bring up or down the levels of both the medium and the, the people who are talking. Yes. You could prioritize yes. your people that are in your network over the random public. Mm. But I don't know. I feel like some people really hate the movie theater thing and other people really like like can you believe it what are they gonna do next moments right <laughs> mm. that's really fun yeah i didn't think about how you would listen or or react to it i feel like you'd listen to the podcast and then afterwards you'd kind of like browse through yeah, people's yeah, yeah. comments right and see what people said about your favorite part of the podcast where you left comments or, or something a lot of people listen that, to podcasts yeah. walking the dog doing the dishes driving is huge so like mm -hmm. having it actually live as native audio that people are adding to it is really interesting yeah i also i feel like it makes more revenue like i feel like you'd make more revenue as a podcaster because now you have advertisements maybe built in or ads when people are looking or listening i don't know you could throw you could put more analytics behind your podcasts have a really engaging podcast with low viewers or listenership and now you're like creating a better experience we're gonna open the can of worms to this world of not twitch streamers but like podcast commenters where like i never listen to the daily but i always listen to the daily you know with stephen colbert's comments on top yeah. of it mm. that's interesting i was thinking about the oh, content moderation dope. problem you do have like how do you keep the rando from just yelling Nazi, 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 Nazi over it or whatever? <laughs> you right? just you end your app. You'd be like, who, what comments do I want to overlay on this one? And you have your favorites of people that you trust that are f add humor or whatever to it or additional explanations. And we can do the Reddit model of like distributing moderation out to the podcasters, our admins, and they can mm. elect other moderators oh. to downrank or hide people who just scream whatever obscenities you know you could do like a transcription and each voice to text and then highlight like swear words or yeah auto detect but i like the idea of being able to subscribe to your favorite commentators yeah that's really like, cool just being able to like oh yeah like famous comedian is being mm -hmm. paid to do a bunch of riffs on this this one. american life yeah <laughs> yeah it's like a watch along or like a, a riff tracks, you know, the mystery science theater. It's just, it's riff tracks. Podcast react concept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. The beauty of the podcast industry is that it's all built on like super old technology, RSS feeds and hosted files and stuff. And there's no one gatekeeper for it. Right. So like Apple doesn't choose who gets to be on the platform or not because there is no one place. So this is really lucrative as a business because anyone can come in with this cool new app and like build on top of this open ecosystem and nothing's going to shut it down. You know, if you want to build a really cool podcast app, then just do it. I love that idea. That's so fun. Well, yeah, I guess I'm, I feel like this is such an obvious one. I feel like it exists and I just don't know where it is. And no, yeah, SoundCloud's it, like 95% of the way there. YouTube's like 85%, but none of them have the, the real time community interaction thing like you're saying all right let's do this one this is the one this is the idea <laughs> no no you just gave it away that's the whole conceit well, of the show I, i've been giving ideas away and nobody's building them right so uh, <laughs> your time will come might as well just yeah we will be on a last slide in a y combinator pitch someday someone got our <laughs> their idea from this show and now they're a trillionaire and there's going to be a podcast overlaid on top of us talking right now, explaining where all our ideas went. Here's why they're totally wrong. <laughs> Leo, tell me, what's your idea this time around? Not unrelated. So, uh, 
text to speech has gotten pretty good in recent months with these AI revolutions here and um, things that you feed a bunch of text into can sound pretty natural to listen to in a way that they didn't last year. Right. So I want to combine Wikipedia, which has interesting factoids about places. Things are geotagged in Wikipedia. You can load up a map view of Wikipedia and see local areas of interest that are like near you. Right. And combine that with audio. So I want to have a personalized tour guide. I pop in headphones while walking through the street in downtown Chicago, and it's telling me all about, hey, did you know that that statue over there is this? People do those audio tours in a museum, right, where they walk from piece to piece and the little headphone thing tells them the pre-recorded piece. There are trillions of interesting factoids on the Internet that could be harvested and told to me. Even just as like a little background, hey, you're on your commute right now. Did you know that that is a historical site over there and that was from <laughs> World War II and blah, blah, blah? I think that there's so much stuff around everybody who that they just don't know about and it could be narrated on your phone. You've got location. You've got access to all of this content. It's free. Someone build a nicer interface where I don't have to like search pull up and read through something, but have it be a little bit more naturally presented to me via audio. I like it. It's like if AR, if we had augmented reality glasses that worked, but <laughs> right. audio version. <laughs> so Meta introduced those Ray-Bans. The most recent version has like, I'm looking at something and it says, oh, that that's the Eiffel Tower. It's this tall, right? It can kind of be a oh, little cool. bit aware of what you're looking at with a camera and image recognition, but... Yeah. But you're doing straight up GPS on here. Sure. I love that. You know that I'm a couple hundred feet from that church. Hey, did you know that that church was actually built by the KKK? Oh, shit. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, right? Thanks, we, Wikipedia. Yeah. There's got to be stuff like that. You should that. probably burn it down. Right? It's just, <laughs> I don't turns know. into Black Mirror quick, right? <laughs> 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 and... It could even like generate little walking tours for you. Sure. Like here's like use the AI stuff to be like, here are 10 great places to visit in X. And it does that. It uses something like OpenStreetMap to do the navigation. It like navigates you turn by turn. Yeah. People pay a lot yeah. of money for guided this tours solid. like this. And I feel like uh, uh, we could even build a community around it. So I am a frequent contributor to this app and I've built a bunch of. Here's a neat 30-minute route through five local parks and some interesting factoids about them. You make it like a, a sourced community thing, yeah. That's a really good idea. I, I, I paid, When I had my work team in town, a remote, full remote, I ended up paying for a walking tour. That's 20 bucks a person. And there's like 15 people. And it's just her. It's a guided tour. It's literally what you said as the app, but a human person doing it. Sure. Uh which actually is kind of weird because we <laughs> we had some random person join our walking tour in the middle of it. Uh, and she, he's like, all right, I'm just going to join this, right? So it avoids that whole thing, that awkward situation. But you would never do that just for yourself, right? Like a walking tour of uh, one? You know, it, who, is our, who is our special guest today? I feel like this would be a perfect – we get a whole group of people and now instead of it being a walking tour of one, it's like five people all listening to the walking tour at the same time, right? <laughs> And now it's just, uh, yeah, I don't see why that can't be a thing, too. We can all leave comments at different points along the way. <laughs> GPS tagged. Yeah. Um, at this point, the, Leo said this. There's a Nike running app, too, where you can, like, post your runs and stuff. You can, like, kind of share your your walking tour or something. If we got really fan, like, oh, this is my favorite tour. You walk around this this area. It does seem like it would be a good exercise companion if you're a jogger or something. You're just going around and, hey, did you know that that fountain over in that park over there is from this? And it represents that. And Yeah. Oh, and I bet there's like multiple. I bet you could rotate between uh, different factoids, too. So you can every walk is different. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It'll keep track of your history and not repeat. And people are adding new stuff all the time to Wikipedia. That's the beauty of it, right? Mm hmm. Always up to date. Yeah. yeah. 
This sort of reminds me of, so Leo knows this, but I'm a pretty avid geocacher. And a couple of years ago, they introduced something called Adventure Labs, which is basically just user-created walking tours. Ooh. So you can, or driving tours or boating tours, so you pick, so you can pick five points of interest and you go to each location and answer a little question about them. But like, this seems like just that for the masses, throw in some AI. But like when people create walking tours who aren't just like tourism boards, really interesting stuff results i've done like historic schoolhouses of the county we live in or like covered bridges or stuff like that so i just think when you combine the subsets of the venn diagram of people who love maps with people who love <laughs> other niche interests like totally like you get the train people on this like <laughs> right <laughs> The There's probably a lot of local tourism boards who've built tours and interesting fact databases and stuff like this that are just sitting locked away in a spreadsheet somewhere. And if they could contribute that to mm -hmm. Wikipedia, not only could this app use it, but then the whole world has access to that stuff. Walkopedia. Oh, you found <laughs> there it. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Nailed it. <laughs> and that's it. Walkopedia. Waka Wakapedia for the funny version. <laughs> Man, visitor bureaus, Leo. This is We're back to it. <laughs> yep. I do like the idea of driving tours, too. So you can do your own, like, trolley experience, right? But you're in the car. Yeah. You're like, yeah. Or I, I think this would be really cool because when you first visit, like, you're visiting a city for the first time, right? It's really hard to, like, create your itinerary. So I wonder if you take this, instead of it being like an educational thing, it's just like, hey, go on a tour with a tourist who knows the area really well, and you kind of just drive in this area, and now they're saying, oh, that's a really good bar at night. Oh, that's really mm -hmm. busy. You don't want to go there after five. Like, mm. literally just some person in your car telling, as a local, telling you what you should and shouldn't do. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Don't go to this bar after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> or go to and go to that bar, right? But do <laughs> go to this one. <laughs> I, I, I there is some value there. I think that uh, is missed. That it outside of like maybe pulling data p contributors to walking tours. There are so many like local historian geeks that would love to do walking tours, um, and you can they can do like a sample, or that could be their like freemium version of mm. of their walking tour. Is like yeah, to download my my walking tour and I got five more in the, in the oven. Yeah. You just got to call me. Right. Or, or hell they could just be selling it. Right. You just sell different audio books for walking tours. And now that are location aware that are, yeah. Right. I want to get that knowledge out of their head and onto some publicly mm -hmm. scrapable thing. So I could put it in an AI <laughs> blender and have it, you know, magic me. But it is. It makes sense to have this be community based too. You get your people who are like well rated, like a good Uber driver, but a good local tour guide. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a yeah, like authorship, but vocally, right? You get Morgan Freeman to do the voice of your <laughs> of your tour, and now it's okay, like that would oh, be pretty cool. I'll buy the ten dollar version, the premium Morgan Freeman version, <laughs> or Snoop Dogg. Like that's that that's also like a thing. <laughs> Have some sort of like passive mode where it's just like random factoid mode. So rather than like a guided tour, just have it on. It's basically just like if you had me in the car, with it. You know, just being like, it's just called Sandra. See that old building name. that used to be like a mire fifty years ago. <laughs> That's great. Whoa. I love that. And people, <laughs> so you've got your map, and then people are leaving much like the podcast comments, just notes in the area and you're, you're getting fed them randomly and they get upvoted or downvoted. So they are more likely to appear. It's like yik yak sort of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I hate it now. <laughs> yes. Say, want... We're on the same wavelength, dude. Yik yak, but <laughs> audio yik -yak bullying. Good. It's just, <laughs> we're, we're making fun of places now because we can't make fun of people anymore. <laughs> Once so. again, you're running up against some content canceled. moderation nightmare hell rides, I think. <laughs> oh, you could figure it out eventually. You could have little sliders inside the app that says, how educational do you want this versus how completely useless do you want this? And then you can filter it, right? Like, not safe for work mode, right? You just listen to all the hate. <laughs> That's your Famous around homes time. of adult actors. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that would be kind of shocking. Like our little, our sweet little town, and you're just like, 
oh wow that happened there (laughs) there's probably stories yeah that are locked up in people's heads getting them put out somewhere would be fun I could start some really mad rumors, dude. I could start some <laughs> crazy rumors. The original Stroop Waffle was launched in this home. Yeah, I don't know how you do fact checking at scale. That's tough. <laughs> it gets people. It gets people on the app, though. I bet if you just put out some just straight lie. lie, yeah, yeah, everybody's gonna be like, "That's how next door is like alive." Is because people just need to <laughs> communicate the truth to these liars, right? <laughs> Like half the people on there are just correcting false information. <laughs> when neighbors start talking, good things happen. Isn't that their slogan? <laughs> is, is that what they I say? Good is. things happen. Yeah. Oh, that's. I hope that's a self fulfilling prophecy because they, they need, need a lot of that. <laughs> you see the people on stuff. there. God damn it, Diane! Your cat's in my backyard <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> our our next door is actually pretty tame because it's just a bunch of mili- middle aged women selling each other lawn furniture. But... <laughs> in December, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every once in a while, though, like the top comment, like once a month or once every other week, you'd just be like, "Oh, that's gonna start a fire up in here." <laughs> I don't know. I kind of love half- the idea of being <clears throat> able to drive down a street and just listen to the random neighbor arguments that are happening. <laughs> Just what's the tea in this area going through? Well, this uh, freaking Frank's fence over here is encroaching on my rose bushes. The minute that you introduce replies on the geo map, the <laughs> Wikipedia, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that's when things really pop off. It's just Godwin's law. All right, Scott, what do you got for us this week? It was kind of an unspoken rule for when we started this podcast, like, let's stay stay back from AI, just because we can't just have, like, here's a cool idea. AI is going to solve it. <coughs> it was all the Move rage. Yeah. Yep. But man, AI is doing some cool things to, uh, nowadays. And one that I keep getting hung up on is ChatGPT has their, in their app, you can upload images now. So you take and put an image into the app, and it'll give you a full description of what's happening there. I took you know, a picture of my dog last night and chat GPT, what's going on in this image? Oh, there's a brown dog sitting on a couch with a yellow collar uh, surrounded on this color couch. And it'll give you as much detail as you want on it. So at the same time, they've also started releasing different APIs where you can connect chat GPT to pretty much anything. Now that they're into different apps like Zapier and whatnot, it's as easy as just like, I want this to do this when this happens. And so Here's what I want to do. I want to take a cheap piece of hardware, like a wise camera or just a webcam, have it hooked up to a chat GPT API to analyze images and trigger outputs based upon what it's seeing. And that's it. This is like, this is all no code. So anyone can use this to do pretty much anything. I can take a camera, point it at my car outside and be like, if this car moves at any point, send me a text, turn on a light, do whatever but it's all based on me verbally describing something instead of having to have any knowledge of coding whatsoever. All with a $20 piece of hardware that plugs in over USB or whatever. That's fun. Dude, okay, Scott, that's so it's like a stakeout, right? You're like a cop <laughs> staking out a That's a good name. Room. Stakeout. Just like I guess... watch. Just watch mode, you know? Your robot uh, watchman. Or is it more than that? Is it like eyeball, like just like... You're telling I, a command to a camera to watch for something, right? Maybe it is just like a, a stakeout thing where I can, it, it would be the equivalent of me having a person staring at something, letting me know when something happens. So I'm hiring a cheap PI with a cell phone to call me when X happens. Hmm. See, the thing is, though, with those API calls, right? You're running those every frame, every second. You know, you got to figure out that, but... Yeah, and uh, the Wise Cams that you mentioned ha- used to have an onboard machine learning mm-hmm. model, and they'd be able to tell this is a person, this is a whatever. As hardware is getting better, it seems like we could do like that's true. Google's Bard now has a, a version that runs on phones. That's like a small large language model. It seems like we're on the cusp of being able to put something just good enough for basic, you know, image recognition onto the device itself and have it run locally. Mm-hmm. It's open source now. You can download some open source model that would probably do this job decently well too. Mm-hmm. So the hardware is 
you could it's a couple maybe a couple gigs actually to run i don't know how much ram you need but to run an ai model and have it watch it so dude staking out uh certain <laughs> things is cool or interesting <laughs> Well, Scott, you and I at work have a problem that something like this could solve, which is trying to count people who are moving through a space and all of the existing solutions there have some big Achilles heel. So if you could have a camera that's literally watching how many people have come through, how long have they been in this? How are they gone? Because it's AI. It could track who if you yeah. wanted it to It'd be like this person is hogging the conference room. <laughs> This person's name is Derek, and you're going to remember that this is Derek. Got it. That's Derek. Now tell me every time Derek does something. Yeah? I mean, that's the kind of thing we're coming up on, right? Oh, man. Please describe what Derek's doing to me every five minutes, and then just give me a play-by-play. Yikes. Yeah, this is get really dystopian really quick. Keep an eye on my wife. Don't let her leave the house. <laughs> Honestly, What's I'm it? trying to think of, like, not crazy sketchy version? uses uh, of this i'm trying to come up with a uh, trail cam hunters like great awesome one. like like you know what's track the game this this track this deer or like farmers keep an eye on this cow if this cow starts to act weird let me know <laughs> keep an eye on my pet while i'm away sandy we need your positive spin on more things yeah pet monitor one would be great Whenever my pet does something really cute keep it uh recorded that's a great one Oh, look at that. They're sleeping on their back with their paws up in the air. Send me a look at that. My camera just told me they were watching it, and now they told me. Automatically post it on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back karma. dystopian. <laughs> <laughs> cute detector. It's just like watching your dog all day and, takes, and sends you cute photos of your dog. <laughs> I just have Dolly generate pictures of my dog now. I don't bother taking them. <laughs> doesn't need to be real it just, it just needs to happen it's all about that karma i'm just chasing it <laughs> is there a particular like thing where you wish that you could use this that you could use it for honestly no i was just more excited about the fact that someone with zero coding background could we're getting very close to where they could be like i want this to do this and that's it if this then that but for anything in real time with nothing more than vocalizing it i have a problem at work that this would solve uh, we have a presence sensor that's working really well it tells us when a room is occupied or not but the mm -hmm. history of who is in the room and who's not is locked in their like smart home platform ecosystem you have to use their bad app to get at the data and they have an api and one of the many many projects on my plate has been i need to write an integration because there's no if this and that or zapier for this particular smart home ecosystem to get at the data and write to a spreadsheet every time someone comes or leaves the room to know how often is this conference room used. I wish that I could just take your cool camera and point it in there and say, whenever someone is in here, write to a spreadsheet. And then I have a list of how often this room actually is being used. Love that. Dude, the amount of energy you would save doing that alone for like HVAC systems turning on and off. Like, yeah. Like that's a huge, you would make so much savings. Like I, I did that for a, like a year. I was doing a startup where I would, we'd take presents and Google calendars and Outlook calendars okay. and then turn on and off facilities. So it's just like, whoa. It, oh, yeah. I see. Like to save heat or lights or something. Is there no one in this building? Turn it all off. Oh, that's cool. The campus of the college it's, that I work yeah. at, I recently helped somebody retire, and they were instrumental in orchestrating the argument for why we should shut down between Christmas and New Year's and the hundreds of thousands of dollars that it saves to not have people plowing this, the sidewalks and going around and heating the buildings, like you said, and doing all the stuff you have to do to keep a business open is enormous. Changing the garbage cans, right? Like all yeah. the... Yeah, everything. I love you, everything. Yeah, yeah, right. It's insane. You know, but I think too, Scott, you could probably do stuff like a package, right? Like, I want to know when my dog throws up. Like, <laughs> I want to know when a bird hits my window. Text or me like, if it's 11 p.m. and I forgot to take the trash out or something mm. for next morning. Or message, hey, it, did it snow more than an inch outside? Call the plow guy to plow it at 4 a.m. or whatever. Or I'm the manager of a local Best Buy. Let me know if anyone's shoplifting in this aisle. <laughs> Back to dystopian. 
No, but that's a thing already, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Target yep. is like insane about that. They're insane about that. Yeah, why why do you know that? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Sold phones at Target and the AP guys like they're they're intense people. It's just yeah. like I couldn't be a cop, so I'm gonna be an AP guy at Target. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just it's, it's, is that like literally the loss prevention? Like, what is AP? Uh, asset protection. Yeah. This guy would literally like hide behind shelves, like <laughs> secret with a walkie, you know. Oh jeez. Is he turning the corner? You know, and I'm like, dude. This is, I get it. Like he's stealing an Xbox 360 controller again, but like <laughs> you don't have to go full Mission Impossible on this. But yeah, I, I get it. You're probably your bonus is probably caught up in that. But anyways, uh, was, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> uh, the consumer friendly version of this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. I, this reminds me. Do you guys remember this movie? This Disney movie, The Smart Mom Home. No. Did you guys watch this? Like, I think that was a dream was, you had. <laughs> no, there was a movie called Smart like, House, Smart... I think. Yes. I don't know. And if... It was a mom. Like it turned into a mom of the home and it would trap the kids inside and like become like because it was so, so much safer. In the, in, I don't know. It was just oh, like yeah. a crazy Smart House. But you're saying you want to live in it. It was directed by LeVar Burton. <laughs> Guys, that freaked me out back in the day. I don't know why. It's just like <laughs> we're digging was, into your childhood trauma now. <laughs> that was like an unreason. Like for me, it was not. It's, it wasn't supposed to be a scary movie, but then it became one. It was just like I don't know. But it reminds me of that a little bit. Like I mean, there's, but maybe not the evil version. Just like how do you make the good version would be just like a homekeeper, like. You always leave your laundry in the same damn spot. Why don't you put a basket there? Like, you, <laughs> you dummy. Like, uh, Does it send you that text? laundry chute. <laughs> I just I just feel it. I just feel like that's what I would say to myself. If I, I love was it. trying to take care of myself. Like, Honestly, uh, I would even use that to just point it at my laundry machine and be like, let me know when my laundry is done so I can remember to freaking put it in the dryer. Shoot. Mm-hmm. That's a great, that's a yeah. great simple example of how, yep. yeah, this is, that is staking out. That's stakeout right there. Mm-hmm. Like watch this thing and make it tell me when it's when done. When you see a light turn green here. Yeah. And you don't have to use fancy sensors and connect it to a microcomputer and all that stuff. It just can like look at it. Yeah. Tell me when this paint is dry. It's just watching paint dry <laughs> <laughs> that's why robots are going to overthrow us <laughs> out of anger and boredom i feel like there's other areas where you're like watching something like when when are you in life just like waiting for some, mm. the microwave well i mean they got the ding right like when are you just kind of already tells you <laughs> yeah. yeah but i mean like everybody like watches their microwave the last 30 seconds i feel like it's just the like... proverbial pot boiling <laughs> yes <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Like the chef, yep. right? Just like mm. helping you there cook you go. while you're cooking. Like those noodles it, look done. Is right? this done? Hold it up to camera. Is this golden brown? Keep an eye on these. Dude, mm-hmm. put it in an oven. It'll tell you like, oh, cookies yeah, right. are getting close. Pizza's <laughs> almost Ooh. done. Because even if you set the time right, you know. Give it some physical hardware too. Give it a temperature sensor, but it can also look at it. An oven one's a cool idea. Yes. Oh, yeah. It, you don't have to connect anything to it. It can just visually read a temperature sensor that's in we can there. Improve the smart fridge. Put it in your fridge and forget about it. And then when you're at the store, you can say, how much milk did I have left? Yes. These are, this is the <laughs> appliance. This is yeah. for appliances, that's Scott. This is, this is where one. you go with this. <laughs> this might be for appliances. <laughs> it's totally okay. <laughs> totally not dystopian. And it's just like smart, like make you a better cook maintain your fridge better right you got moldy cheese in your drawer Mm -hmm. i'm looking at Mm -hmm. it like (laughs) the camera's telling you (laughs) clean out your thing (laughs) green right it's just (laughs) (laughs) there's a coke can in the back of your fridge you know you should probably pick that up and move it right it's like the stupid shit (laughs) <laughs> it expired three years ago. Dude, yeah. The amount of savings. <laughs> I feel like just throwing out the jars in your fridge drawer, like cabinet. Yes. That's for a $20 yes, webcam. Dude, you fire up the app and you look at it and it's highlighted the four things in your fridge mm. door that expired this week. Oh man. It tracks when you put them in there. Yeah. So be like, 
Eight days ago on that Alfredo <laughs> sauce. Time to go. All right. Let me go through and I'm checking off. Where that. is it here? For fridges. Uh, fridge pressure pads plus cameras. Check. That was on my list of <laughs> things to talk about someday. <laughs> I'm seriously after this going to take a picture of my fridge with chat GPT and be like, just describe what's in here. Tell me what you see. And I want to see what I can come up with. Oh, you mm. point it out there and you say, here's the three shelves that I have. Here's what's in my cabinet. What are some novel recipes I could make with all this stuff? Oh, yeah. Love that. What do I? What can I make for dinner tonight that I probably haven't heard of? You could make a pizza out of ketchup <laughs> instead of pizza sauce. <laughs> no, come on. It's open AI. It's just... <laughs> Such a robot taste bud, right? Like... <laughs> All right, Sander, what do you got? All right. So this is sort of related to Leo's, I guess. As a college student, I frequently witness freshmen year after year, now that I'm a senior, doing the same things that freshmen just always do and because they don't know better. And so I was thinking, so there's sort of the big umbrella and then a specific idea that inspired it. Some sort of app to help new college students where you can like, just have all of these little things and it's sort of location based. So as you walk up to things, it'll be like, you don't need to put in your door code for the dining hall door. You could just tap your ID. (laughs) But what this was sort of inspired by, so there's sort of all these other things inspired by that, but the sort of core concept was there's a bunch of great things for driving directions and even maybe walking directions, but not for the specific environment of navigating a college campus because even on our small college campus, people take the craziest routes between buildings because they don't know better. So some sort of app where you can plug in your your class, your next class, how long you have to get to here, and you just sort of hold it up and it will just sort of direct you. Cut through this building, go up these stairs, don't turn this way to like help you navigate. And this could even be used for like big office complexes. Oh no. My meeting ran long, and now I've got to get to the executive wing. How do I do that? So, like, core idea, some sort of fancy navigation. Secondary idea, just general platform that exists somewhere in between an official thing and, like, yeah, yeah, because yeah, like college sponsored get to know the campus <laughs> app seems like it'd be wildly uncool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like spin that in a cool, more helpful crowdsourced way. So like it's still fun, but not like totally mean. And it has like all of the functionality to be helpful. Like if there's a club, it can be like, oh, yeah, we're in this room. Click a button. Here's how to get there. Because there are always those places that no one has ever heard about. Once Leo mm-hmm. and I, a couple summers ago and during an installation project, discovered a classroom that we had never heard of. We didn't know where it was. We had to ask five people where it was. So like something like that. I was a student for four years. You guys were as well. And then I worked there for 10 years and I'd never heard of this room in a building I've been in hundreds of times. Yeah. Leo, that classroom burned down 40 years ago. (laughs) I just keep envisioning if you have an app that tells you how long it gets from this point to this point or the fastest way to get from this point to this point, People are going to take that as a challenge. And all of a sudden, you're going to have an app of being like, I can get from classroom 313 in this building to 414 in that building in under five minutes and 42 seconds. And they are just sprinting, finding the absolute optimal I think that's path. That's a bad be. thing. That's how you make it fun. And it's then you have a all your racing data. app. It's just like mm-hmm. yeah. everybody <laughs> racing each other. <laughs> <laughs> and finding better routes. Yeah. That's right. That's the only yeah. way to win. Yes. What is the best possible yeah. route to go from here to here? That's a fun idea. But then you're going to see and like, kids like jumping through windows <laughs> and like crazy. <laughs> hey, it is the fastest route. Beat you, you know? It's just. Mm-hmm. But I still you know, have a leaderboard. But I like this because we, again, it's a very small campus, but people still complain about how long it takes to get everywhere. And I think half of it is just. People don't realize how they can optimize their routes because they're always walking down the sidewalks and like around buildings. And it's like you can save so much time if you just use the other set of stairs, cut through this building. And especially that's only multiplied on enormous state school campuses. 
And I feel like that just makes the introductory college experience so much better if you don't always feel lost. And guided by an upperclassman. It helps build some community, too. Yeah. Yeah. Voiced by Morgan Freeman in your ear. (laughs) Google Maps has a transit mode that you're describing. But for walking directions, you hold it up. It does, like, augmented reality. So you see your, your... you know, what your camera is actually seeing, but with signs overlaid and dotted lines and stuff on the sidewalk. So building that, but it's not good at indoor stuff yet. So yeah. Yeah. Getting your campus mapped down to the room number and then having that be the actual thing built with class schedules and stuff. Sounds awesome. And also like having it take into account busy times and places like suggest times to go to the dining hall or something just like general, like campus companion, that's like helpful, but it's not like too like boring and official. Like the college that I attend and work at and Leo works at has a online map, but it's not very like useful as an active thing to use. It's just right. a digital version of like a fold out brochure map. But like if that's like <laughs> a dynamic, it has like Google has now where it's like, oh, this is busy now, like helping building a mapping and communication application specific to the needs of a large workplace campus or college, I feel like is a market. I think this applies to like so many, it's like the, like Google maps doesn't do well on the last, I don't know, you know how they say the last mile, but this is like the last hundred, 200 feet. Like I work in a co-working space and the hardest part is to where in downtown Holland do I go to get to this location? It's you have to go to this hallway, go up this elevator, and now you're there. And it's like, whoa. But that happens like dentist office and like even small mm-hmm. little like strip malls. You're like, where the hell is my ortho orthopedic surgeon? Yeah. Like I gotta figure out which which suite number in this building is where I gotta go. It's just the last 30 seconds that are stressful and turn it into hospital complexes. That's another one where it's just like sort of removes the whole, like follow the green line, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And they tried to solve this with Bluetooth beacons a while back, but it didn't really catch on. Like the, the dream was you'd go into your Apple store or Abercrombie and you're walking around and it's saying like, this table is the sale. And, your phone is alerting you as you go around from place to place because it's within X number of feet oh from the beacon that is oh, that place. In a grocery right. store, this would be. Which, oh my gosh. Yeah, this would right. Be, oh, yes. I was just oh. thinking that. Find I pull up app, cucumbers put, and it dot lines all the way to where those are on the shelf. Absolutely. I know people who avoid shopping at large supermarkets, even though they're so much cheaper, just because. Yeah target is so much smaller and easier to find stuff and they would Mm -hmm. shop at Meyer or Walmart if they just knew how to get around. Like I'm thinking of one friend in particular who shopped at Meyer local Midwestern big supermarket chain once with me. And she was like, wow, this is so great, but I would never do this on my own because you just know where every, (laughs) everything is. So like, yeah, solving that problem. Shipping. True. Do those apps where you can order groceries like, you're essentially door dashing or grub hubbing groceries to your home. Do they, those apps must have like efficiencies for the yeah. pickers on them, right? Like mm-hmm. they do. Oh. And the, the local grocery store app used to tell you exactly where it was on a map, mm-hmm. but I think once in a while it was inaccurate or something. And now it only tells you the aisle, which I don't know. That's a major step back. And like, Oh, here we go. Routing efficiency so like going back to my yep. geocaching yeah. thing <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a exactly. geocaching application that you can like plug in all the different caches you want to get and it'll like optimize it for driving or biking or walking do that with groceries put in your shopping list yes it draws God, out the yes. route guys i <laughs> this would be the most satisfying <laughs> experience ever mm-hmm. like sh- i hate doubling back all put, the way across the store because put I your phone to holder on your cart just like it tells you where to stop yes. and it's like you don't even have to stop moving just like yes and your wheels that you're pushing are generating phone <laughs> charge <laughs> i i literally rewrite my wife's shopping list sometimes to like organize it by section and order because you're just i'm like <laughs> sure yeah, you're like, all dairy yeah there's no it's like i can't even fathom why she would write it this way it's like so frustrating to me like why would you put butter last like i get your thought 
process, but like you put butter and then milk on the complete other sides of this list. You're like, are, are you trying to kill me? Like, just totally. kill me now. <laughs> Just trying to get you I, to take extra steps, it. man. <laughs> That's right. I, and, okay, another. Here's I. I will never. I stopped. I like grocery stores killed me by finding ice cream cones. Okay, what aisle do you go to find ice cream cones? <laughs> Not the freezer section, right? Where is the ice cream cones? Not the, Not the bread, f- right? Baking bread. <laughs> Baking. There's only so many freezers in a. No, you don't Grocery put ice cream store, cones right? in a freezer, right? The ice cream cones. Where do you go find Just a that? cone with no ice what cream aisle, in it. Scott? Oh, I see. I mean, every and every grocery store has a different oh, aisle. God. And it's just like, uh, do I just go in the ice cream aisle and hope to God there's ice cream cones there? No. <laughs> just good luck. Like, there are just some things that don't, yeah. just, they just don't have a place in the store. And you just, just throw them on the ground. Yes. I had yeah. a similar experience yeah. finding finding q-tips in a walgreens once i spent like 20 <laughs> minutes in a walgreens looking i was googling i was on like r slash walgreens where do people <laughs> just, just because there's sometimes these things that defy categorization so it's just like yeah q-tips but... in a walgreens <laughs> yeah i was just like is it's it a good band name ear? like like what is this associated with? Am I associating this with ears, face, skin? Like, yeah, cleaning products. It's next to the Windex. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out oh. it's in makeup. Yeah. It's just in makeup. It's just that's where it belongs now. It's yeah, just... and it's like on a weird end cap or something. So like, right, I feel right. like that's great. This just solves all sorts of problems for like looking for things inside where it's like it's too small scale for mapping applications generally to care about. Or it's like it does that thing when you type in the name of a store or a place and Google Maps just decides that the best place for that is the middle of the building it's in. Yeah, so it just like right. puts you on completely the wrong street. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like driving around the block trying to find where the heck the parking garage is like. Yes. Something to bridge that gap. Dude. Yes. So you guys ever use. Oh, you guys are all Android users, I'm guessing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, a, I'm an avid Android user before I got blue bubbled, bullied to death. Um, but uh, <laughs> share the wealth, I, I guess. Sorry. No, air tags like have this awesome feature. Like you have an air tag. Ultra wideband. Yeah, yeah. It's you. It literally like I have it in my stroller when I'm at Disney World and it helps me find my stroller in the literally sea of strollers it tells you how many feet what direction it's in mm. that amplified right just air tags all over right. the store just or versions of ice that. cream cones 12 feet that way no leo don't you're you're that's uh <laughs> you're bringing up past trauma no, 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 it's just like uh, i gotta talk to your therapist I, first yeah i get it the amount of hours i've spent in a grocery store finding shit that i can't find i'm sorry i just like can't. yes same can't. yeah it's one of the reasons i started shopping at aldi yeah not just the price but also just like the amount of time it takes to like develop your routine in an enormous grocery store like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just so easy when you can just have your little 30 minute route and not when you have to spend 40 minutes looking for what aisle they put q-tips or right deodorant or whatever here's in. another i'm gonna flip this uh idea a little bit because i think sander like what if you were running a meeting and you could tr- like let everybody know how far away you were and you can like Ooh. uh right like in corporate environments like oh this guy's gonna be late on your google calendar invite like estimate of how far away i am right. Like, it'll be like automatic message. I'm running late. I am at, and because it's like local, it's like, I'm in this building. Like, or you just look at the Google Calendar event attendees. There's three people here. They've got little checks. One of them says, hasn't left last meeting seven minutes away in that building. And one of them mm-hmm. says, uh, mm-hmm. you know, walking now, two minutes out. Uh, yeah. That'd be sweet. Like optimize your meetings. Those extra minutes are like that one extra email. Like, there's no way in hell anyone over 30 is going to turn that on with Big Brother t- Scaries, but that's an awesome idea. It's a corporate, it's, you know, you put it on your RFID tags and you you, you turn it into something mm. like that. And now you have it being not so. Pit, yeah. It you would know. know when you scan into buildings. Picks meeting locations. Sure. Automatically based on where everyone is before. It's like, 
here is which building you should meet in if you're in four different buildings. Google Workspace does that for just like locations of where you've assigned where you work. So if you try to meet with someone else, it'll say, oh, here's a space. If you've uploaded all your spaces in the Google Workspace, here's one that's halfway between you two. Oh, but it doesn't cool. take into account other meetings and stuff. That's a great idea. Like here's the optimal place in the optimal like time of day. Yeah. That's actually incredible because like uh, it's really hard to find the right the right conference room, right? Like mm. just don't pick don't pick where the the internet will pick for you, right? And going back to sort of where this started, incorporate this into our college has like a schedule planning thing. You like pick all the classes you want and it'll like optimize sections based on how you want your schedule to be. Throw in this whole location thing. Because it's great when, like, it'll give you a really good schedule time-wise, but it'll just have, like, you go from building A to building B across campus back to building A. It's like incorporate that back into the college aspect. Be like, here's a schedule that optimizes yeah. your trip across campus. Say, oh, I want to have lunch at this time. So, like, it'll be near the dining hall or whatever. So Totally. Dang, Leo, mm-hmm. your previous idea would work really well for walking tours in college campuses, by the way. I yeah, was thinking cool. about that. Yeah. Asynchronous. Self-guided. Yeah, self Not every high schooler wants to like sign up through the admissions office to go on the special tour with the student guiding and all yeah. that. They just maybe download the college app and pop in their headphones and learn about how things work here. Yeah. Hmm. Different majors could have different professors and you could have different it does things. seem so obvious that i do wonder if somebody's already done this so i don't know write in podcast as well that show if you know that somebody's already done this <laughs> <laughs> in my very very cursory googling i didn't see anything like it or comment on super podcast the app that lets you comment while you listen <laughs> <laughs> podcast but better <laughs> podcast but better <laughs> well thank you all for listening on super podcast i hope you enjoyed <laughs> yourself make sure you leave a comment at this moment in the timestamp. <laughs> and thank you xander very much for being here this is a lot of fun thank you pleasure uh our website is spitball.show there you can find links to our youtube channel now that if you're a you know google podcast refugee we're now on youtube uh youtube.com slash at spitball show and then other social media as well, all at spitball.show. Uh, email us feedback, comments, ideas. We're podcast at spitball.show. That's how you can find us on the Fediverse, too. If you're a Mastodon person, just follow podcast at spitball.show. It'll tell you about all of our new publishing. Um, our subreddit is r slash spitballshow. Our intro outro music is Swingers by Bonkers Beat Club. Please, you're listening on a podcast app, probably Super Podcasts by now. Uh, pull it out. Hit that button, pull over your car, press subscribe, press rate. It's the best way for people to find out about the show wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes coming out in two weeks. We will see you then. Mm-hmm.